Good morning and welcome to the Tuesday morning devotional of the First United Methodist Church of Maumelle. I'm Aubrietta Jones. I'm thankful to get to have this time with you. As people join in to our, uh, our devotional, I want to let you know that great things are happening in the life of the church. I'm going to skip forward a few weeks and tell you about a Sunday that we're calling Impact Sunday. Last year, we had a Sunday where we celebrated the ministries of the church and the impact we made. This year, we're having an Impact Sunday that celebrates the ways that we as individuals make a difference in our community. And I'm excited to get to have this time with you. It's going to be on September 11th. We're going to be passing out backpack tags for kids to put on their backpacks as they are in school and getting ready uh, to uh, face the year right now. Uh, we're going to be able to pass those out September 11th and then we're also going to have those kinds of tags or similar tags for anyone in the congregation to put on anything uh, to hang anywhere they would like to hang them just as a reminder that we are made to serve and we are made to glorify God in our speaking and in our actions. And so I'm really excited about that day. There's going to be a video with some testimonies from people in the church about how they try to make a difference in their lives every day, how they feel that God is calling them to make a difference in their careers or in their social life or in their volunteering. It's going to be wonderful. Um, and so that's a good thing that I get to share with you today. I want to continue our discussion. Well, actually, I'm not continuing. I'm starting something new. This last Sunday, we began a new series of messages called Content Warning. Now, we are going back to 1 Corinthians. When we read 1 Corinthians in the summer earlier, a few weeks back, we got through chapters 1 through 4. We're now starting with the fifth chapter. That last series was called Trigger Warning, and we talked about ways in which the Corinthian church was sensitive about their situation and did not always care or were not always concerned about what was right so much as what felt right to themselves. And uh, Paul was correcting that. Now as we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and beginning this series called Content Warning, we are talking about passages in Scripture that might be a little more delicate and sensitive in nature than what we normally discuss openly in worship. This is so much the case that on the last Sunday of the month, the kids will get to go out and have a little bit of fun time during the sermon so we can talk very frankly. And the title of that message the last Sunday of the month is Good Sex. So maybe that tells you why that we want the kids to go out and do something else during that sermon time. So um, with that, I will tell you we are starting at a little tamer spot here in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 for our devotional this morning. We're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 6 through 8. Here now the reading. It says, and, and the context, I want to back up and give you the context. The context is that the church has really been celebrating that one of their members is living in a sinful sexual lifestyle, something that God does not condone. They've been celebrating that, at, presumably because they're really focused on the idea that Jesus forgives everything, so now you can go do whatever you want. That is their conclusion. And really, of course, we are saved to be holy. We're blessed to be a blessing. Uh, we're not forgiven so that we can treat grace casually. We are forgiven so that we can make a difference in the world around us and so we can live in ways that please our Father in heaven. And the church was the church was celebrating a man whose life did not please our Father in heaven. They were celebrating that because they said he's forgiven. The goal is not just for people to feel good about what they're doing because they're forgiven. The goal is for us to celebrate and live lives in celebration of our Father in Heaven. I see Melissa's joined us. Good morning, Melissa. Glad you're with us today. And uh, others are joining in. So the passage we're reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. Going back to the people celebrating this man's immoral lifestyle, Paul says, Your boasting is not a good thing. Do you not know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Clean out the old yeast so that you may be a new batch as you really are unleavened. And I'm going to stop here and say something about that. We think of 
church as a place we go. We think of church as a place we go. If they offer what we want for our kids, if they offer the Bible studies we want to attend and we think we personally need, then that becomes our church. And sometimes if another church starts offering something that sounds like it would be more interesting, then we might quit the church we're going to and go to another. Many people go to lots of different churches in their lifetime, and they might even do that in their own town. In the Bible, the church is not something you go to. It's something that you are. You are the church. That's really what Jesus intended when he looked at Peter, his disciple, and said, On this rock I will found my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. When Jesus founded the church, his intention was that we be a people. A church is not a building. A church is a people. We go to the church building as the church to worship. And so some of these passages that speak to us as if we are a people together, maybe they don't make a lot of sense. It says uh, to us today, it says, do you not know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? And we say, oh, it, it must be that Paul was worried that another individual would start doing these things because, um, because they had that example in front of them. He's not worried about just what one person will do. He's worried about the life of the community of believers together and what they will teach and what, they, what will be preached there, what they will be a part of because of the sin that is in their midst. And as we think about that, um, we have to know that it does matter that churches have core teachings that everybody believes and that people support and, and are affirming. Um, the idea that churches should be very, very diverse in our theological beliefs is really popular today. And um, of course, there's going to be differences of opinion. I love the idea that, for example, Democrats and Republicans can go to the same church or that uh, people who uh, have different views on how they deal with their own personal health can go to the same church. People who have different parenting philosophies can go to the same church. That's wonderful. But when we think about the core teachings of the faith, Everybody needs to be affirming basically the same things. And when we think about uh, moral choices that affect the unity of the church, people have to be unified enough that they can be a church together. And that's what Paul is telling them, that they cannot change the teachings about what God wants for them in their sexual relationships to accommodate somebody who is happy in the relationship that they've found. And clearly this man is happy in the relationship he has found. And Paul is saying that is not enough because you are a body of people and you are to have coherent teaching. You are to have a unified belief. You're to be able to support one another in the same direction. And uh, he keeps going in verse eight. He says, let us celebrate the festival, not with the old yeast, but the yeast the yeast of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Um, he's talking about the Passover here. He says our Paschal lamb has been sacrificed. And then he goes on and he says this in these next two verses or these next two phrases. Um, what he is saying is that the Jewish people, when they were freed from slavery in Egypt, heading out into the promised land the night before, there was a Passover. And uh, God passed over them and enacted judgment on the people of Egypt. And what Paul is saying is, you have been spared from judgment. And Jesus is our lamb. That night, they, they might eat a Passover lamb, um, and uh, they, they, would, um, they would remember, that, I mean, that lamb would be sacrificed for their sins if they were Jewish people. Jesus is our Passover lamb, and we have been delivered. The idea is not to go back and be like other people that have not been delivered. The idea is to live the way God wants us to live and uh, to, to live as a unique people uh, with teachings that might not match the world around us. So as we think about that and we think about our lives, I, it's important for all of us to consider, do I see myself as the church or is the church something I attend? I think that's an important thing to consider. Is the church just something I work at as a pastor or am I a member of the church? Am I part of the church? Technically, I don't join the church, but I am part of the body of faith here. And uh, hopefully um, that I see myself as, as unified with my church. 
And then also to think about where we look to determine what is right and wrong within the body of faith. Do we look at smiling faces? Do we look at impassioned pleas? Do we look at the Bible, the authority, the truth in our lives that was given to us by God to make those decisions? So those are things that I want to put out before you today. And uh, thank you for sharing this time. Let's go ahead and go to God in prayer. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that in it we see life and we receive hope. We pray, God, that you would Give us guidance and direction through your word. Help us to trust you. Help us to trust your word. Help us to trust the teachings of the church throughout the centuries. And we pray, God, that our church would faithfully live and teach the truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all for being a part of this, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.